I just thank God for another opportunity to be here behind this sacred desk, to stand on this hollow ground, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I thank God for the set man of this house, my father in the gospel, the shepherd of this flock, Dr. Melvin Orlando Mariner. I thank God for our leading lady and my sister and friend. I love her, Captain Shelley K. Mariner. Thank God for her spirit, for her kindness, and her desire to see women grow and flourish. To the keepers of the flame who are dispersed throughout this worship service, to the leadership and the staff of this house, and I have to mention that as an administrator because it is an honor and a privilege to walk alongside you and to serve with you. And I thank God for the work that you do. This is the year of pursuit. And on, in July, we are pursuing renewal, but it doesn't end here. And I am reminded, and it takes me now to the scripture of focus for this noble pursuit we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 10 in the New King James Version. If you would stand for the reading of the word. This is a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the people of Corinth. In the first Corinthians, he was admonishing them because of their disobedience and backslidden behavior. But in second Corinthians, after they apologized and repented, he wanted to assure them of his love and infection, his affection and his commitment to them. And it reads as so. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We, were, we are perplexed, but we are not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. You may be seated. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for putting your spirit inside of these weak and fragile vessels. You have chosen to place your immense, rich, inexhaustible treasure in these fragile human bodies that can be so easily broken. Help us, Holy Spirit, to understand this wonderful truth so that we can be more, e more effectively yield to your perfect will and open our eyes so we can see the wealth that you have deposited, not just in some of us, but in all of us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's talk for a moment about the vessel that is you. You all look so good today adorned in your best attire, hair done, suits on, ties, however you decided to come, you look wonderful from here. We hold a great treasure inside of us, and Paul in his writing is admonishing us and reminding us not to forget the treasure that lies within. See, because we become so consumed with how we are adorned and 
what we're going to wear and how we're going to look. And I am in that number because this was not my week to get my hair done, so I had to snatch it back up in a bun. And, and, I, and I will tell you, I didn't think about what I was going to wear until last night because I knew that the treasure inside of me that there is a treasure in your earthen vessel. That Pastor Mariner often says it's more important than your hips, lips, and fingertips. We change these bodies because we want to adorn them. We want, the, we want to look younger. We, and yes, I dye my hair. Let me be transparent about that. But we do those things and we want to look good and we want to bring the best version of ourselves as the outward appearance of what we want people to see and how we want people to think about us. But we want to be careful because sometimes we're cloaking in what we wear. We're cloaking in what we do to our bodies and People don't know that we're really broken inside and we're dying inside, but we are dressing up the outside because we're afraid that someone might see who we really and truly are. But you have in you a treasure in an earthen vessel. and You, you are a vessel and, and God has made you like a clay pot. And, in, that, in those biblical times, a clay pot was a liken to a styrofoam cup. It, it had no value. It was fragile. It could be broken very easily. And as a matter of fact, there are many ruins that demonstrate to us that clay pots got broken. They weren't of much use. They weren't considered of any value. And God wanted us to understand that what happens within us can only happen because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That it is the work that he's doing on the inside of you that cannot compete with go what's going on in the outside of you. Many of us have clay pots and vases. I had a friend, we had a debate about it, was a vase or a vase, whatever you want to call it. But we have vases, some of them are plain and and some of them are adorned. Some we don't even want to put a flower in it because we don't want the flower to compete with the outward appearance of the vase. So we put our flowers in that pot that really doesn't call attention to itself so that the flower can receive the glory. I came this morning to tell you that in your earthen vessel there is a treasure and if you would cultivate that pre treasure through the word of God and believing in him and what he has put in you, you will understand that it's so much more important than what's on the outside. It's not about the cars we drive. It, it's not about the clothes we wear, or the money in the bank, because none of those things can replace that treasure that lies within. God, we thank you on this morning, God, that we all have a treasure within us, and some of us are more aware and in tuned, and, 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 and we, we understand that treasure, and we live out our lives in a way that that treasure becomes, changes our outward appearance, and then some of us don't really recognize it yet, and we've yet to discover what God has instilled in us, and poured in us and put in us. So this container that Paul talks about, he wants you to be sure, he wants me to be sure and certain that we understand that what lies within can never be replaced. That it is the glory of God. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is his death, burial, and resurrection. In this text, the first thing that Paul talks about is that clay vessel and how fragile it is because we know that these vessels will not live forever. 
But what we're grateful for is that he goes beyond the difficulty of the clay faces that we wear. The second is the hope that lies within us and the treasure, what the treasure affords us. God, it says in verses four, eight through nine in, in chapter four of 2 Corinthians, we are hard pressed on every side. We're not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We're hard pressed. Some versions say we're afflicted or we're troubled. The King James Version says trouble, not just in one area at a time, but on every leaning side. There are multiple pressures, not just on one side, every side that causes us to be troubled and oppressed and afflicted from multiple sources. It could be your job, your finances, your relationships, your children, your health. But because of your relationship with Jesus and the treasure that lies within, we are not crushed. You are not distressed. You're not restricted to a narrow space that's cramped or confined. While others may feel they, they are in circumstances where there seems to be no way out, Paul says, but you have a way out. You aren't restricted to only that narrow space, but that your freedom lies in God and your relationship with him. Then it goes on to say we are perplexed, which means to be in a confused state of mind, to be at a loss, to be in doubt to be uncertain. You can identify with that. You wonder what in the world is going on. There's so much going on in the world today. There's gun violence. There is disease. There's economic instability. The climate change. Everything shifts from one place to another. And experts say that even the trauma from seeing these things happen to other people will cause us to experience PTSD and that there is a vicarious trauma that comes from witnessing things that happen to other people. That's why you gotta be careful when you get on social media. I had to, I had to fast from social media. Uh, I started July 1 and, and I haven't been back on since because I, I want to know who I am. I, I, I don't want to spend all my time. I found myself tethered to my phone and my tablet and, and, and reading about other people's lives and the things that they were experiencing. But can I tell you that the pictures that you see are just a snapshot, a false representation of what lives people are truly living. Can, can I tell you that I can get dressed up for a picture and you can look good in a picture and we can post where we were and who we were with and go home and be lonely and bitter and dying and broken. Can I tell you that it's just a snapshot in social media? but that the relationship that we have with God and this treasure within outlasts anything that is external to us. We have to be careful when we covet what other people have. You don't know what it costs to be in their shoes. You don't know the sacrifices they had to make. You don't know the cost of their oil. You don't know what they had to give up to gain. You better be careful coveting that house and that car because you don't work at his or her job. You didn't have to stay up nights late and sacrifice time with family and sacrifice people that were in their lives to get the material things they have. You don't know what it cost. You don't know the cost of my oil and I don't know the cost of yours. I don't know what price you pay to be who you are. We have to be careful judging people 
making assumptions about what they have and what they do and basing their value on what they drive and what they ride around in. We've got to be careful. Yes, God. And then he says, we are, we are persecuted, <laughs> which also means to harass someone, especially because of their beliefs. You're going to have to defend your faith one day. Somebody's going to ask you what you believe and why you believe what you believe. But in your earthen vessel, vessel, there is a treasure. And you will understand as you begin to journey with God what that relationship will truly mean to you. We need to be transparent for the sake of the newcomer. We need to let them know that we didn't arrive at this place without some struggle that there were times when we were white knuckling it just so we could get through. And we need to be able to share our story so that people, there's no false implication that this road is easy. It's not easy to walk this path. The Bible says the road is narrow and few travel there. But I'll tell you this, you don't wanna be on any other road. We thank God for the opportunities that he's given us. And this road, although it may be narrow and difficult to travel at times, many of us will witness to you that there's no other road that we'd rather take. Because while we're persecuted, Paul goes on to say we might be persecuted, but we're not forsaken. That means we're not abandoned, that Jesus will never leave us or forsake us, that he will always be with us, even to the end of the age. And then finally he says, we are struck down, cast down, which means to strike with sufficient force as to knock you out. My God thrown down, struck down. This happens to us a lot. We get the wind knocked out of our sails. We take a hit that throws us for a loop and we have devastating circumstances that we don't bounce back from right away. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You've been in situations where you just didn't think you were gonna make it. You were. Lord, how am I going to get through this? And if you don't get me through this, I won't make it through. But we've been struck down, but Paul says we are not destroyed, which is to perish or be ruined. We may be knocked down, but because of his grace, we're not knocked out. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I came to tell you this morning that the fight is fixed. You've already won. You might get knocked down sometimes, and yes, you are in a battle, but the fight is fixed. You do know what a fixed fight is. When, when the fighter goes in and he makes a decision with his manager that he's going to throw the fight and he's going to let the opponent win, that's when the fight is fixed. Jesus died on the cross to fix the fight for you so that when you get knocked down, you're never destroyed. You're never knocked out. You're never out of the game. We thank God that we can win each and every bout. God, we thank you right now for the fight that's fixed. We thank you that even though we're knocked down, we're not knocked out. Because there are some circumstances in this life where you will not be able to recover without a relationship with God in your life. We have this treasure. 
and this earthen treasure is greater than anything outside of you. This earthen treasure can calm storms. This earthen treasure can stop the chaos and confusion in your life. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, this morning because we're never in this fight alone. I know that you need to understand that your vessel may be frail and you may be going through some things, but I can assure you that what's inside of you is greater than anything going on outside of you. God, we thank you on this morning and I want to leave you with this, that I know that it's often difficult. We, we seek God and sometimes we don't hear him. Sometimes we don't think he's there. But if we would just draw on the treasure within, there isn't anything that can happen in our lives that God can't handle. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing that he can't do, no question he can't answer. I thank God on this morning that there is an earthen vessel who is you and that you carry a treasure, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you. <laughs>